What's up everybody, Alex here. Welcome back to another video and uh, yeah. Uh, at this point I have a little bit of a problem because as it happens, and this happens to a lot of collectors I'm sure, I am taking in more records than I uh, am capable of listening to. And it's not like I just like buying stuff, although that is that is fine. It's like I just run into some of these opportunities that are too good to pass up and uh, this is one of those. So, um, welcome to this video of a mega $5 haul, I guess. Of uh, I got about 40 records here. Each of these was 5 bucks. So, um, yeah, uh, long story short of it, uh, local store was doing like a big sale. Um, and most of these records were typically normally around 15 bucks. Some of them were 20 or 25, you'll see those. Um, but they're all five bucks. I still need to clean and do all the things with these. Some of them are uh, got some dirt on them, but uh, such is life. That's kind of cathartic for some of us is to clean these records sometimes. Um, but it's a ton, a ton of jazz and then classic rock. I mean, that's kind of the, the combination here. Um, tried to separate these, but can't really. So. Yeah, I mean, for five bucks, it, it's just, you, some of these you just can't pass up and you're filling holes and you're doing all those different things. So um, I know people love these videos. I love these types of videos. So again, each of these was five bucks. Mm. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. I'll try to go uh, as quickly as I can. So three right off the bat from the great uh, jazz guitarist, um, Kenny Burrell. We have uh, Ode to 52nd Street. Uh, this is actually a, this is on Cadet Records uh, in a mono promo, which is pretty, pretty dope. So I think this was 1967, maybe. This came out uh, awesome. Uh, a few years later, this is Both Feet on the Ground, another Kenny Burrell, um, Kenny Burrell uh, record on Fantasy Records. And then this one was definitely pretty, uh, pretty cool. This is on Verve, Kenny Burrell. Guitar forms arranged and conducted by Gil Evans. Of course, Gil Evans did so much great stuff uh, with Miles Davis that I'll get to here in a second, but uh, amongst others. So yeah, most stuff, anything Gil Evans, I'm all in on. So this is a super cool pickup. Um, this is kind of strange. I, I, I doubt that he watches uh, videos anymore, but Larry, Canadian Stud Muffin, if you're out there watching somewhere, you'll appreciate this. You don't really find a lot of Sparks vinyl, even after like the resurgence uh, due to the documentary, I just don't see a lot of Sparks records out in, in the uh, in the wild, as they say. But this is Indiscreet. I think this came out in 1975 or so. I'm making that up on Island Records. Um, yeah, five bucks for Sparks Indiscreet. Um, oh, another kind of fun one. I've seen this around a gazillion times. Never pick it up. It's actually worth more than I thought it was worth. But, you know, such is life. This is an original stereo. Um, rave up from, uh, or I'm sorry, rave up, having a rave up with the yard birds. This was super cool on Epic to add to the collection. Um, okay, to be fair, here are two records I already have, but because people are out here buying like $150 audiophile records these days, you can't find these types of records for $5 anymore. So I might be a dick and flip one for 15 bucks. I don't know, maybe I'll buy myself some Chipotle with it. Um, not a sponsorship, but, uh, an original Countdown to Ecstasy. Uh, I think this is on the, um, yeah, so for the label nerds out there with ABC, I think it was the Terre Haute presses that had the white blocks on them. So yeah, an original Countdown to Ecstasy, an original Pretzel Logic. Um, Steely Dan, feeling good about that. This was really cool. This is, uh, the beat goes on from Vanilla Fudge, but this is a German pressing. Alternate cover, obviously on the Horzu label. Uh, nice and flappy like those European records are. This was their second record, I think. So 68 or 69, 68. Um, yeah, I love Vanilla Fudge, man. They're just the coolest. So it was awesome to find this import German pressing, five bucks. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. This was more of an inside joke that I bought. I own nothing of this band. I have nothing against this band. I think the hits are fine. They're just overplayed. But you know what? Maybe this will change the game. But I got 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that what it's called? John Bon Jovi, everyone. Uh, yeah, cool. I mean, who wouldn't love those cats, right? It's not slippery when wet, but neither am I. Anyway, uh, let's jump into 
some more jazz. But these are cool because if you're a jazz head, you know, like stuff on the yellow fireworks prestige label are really cool. So this is some stuff from uh, Eddie Lockjaw Davis, um, his cookbook sort of series. But this is uh, volume two. Uh, again, this is on yellow uh, fireworks prestige label. So yeah, volume two. We have volume one. This is with uh, Shirley Scott. Awesome. Uh, looking forward to that. Here was an absolute banger here. I love my favorite jazz artist of all time. The artist that got me into jazz was Miles Davis. And this was one I didn't have. Double live record from 1970. Miles Davis at Fillmore. Five dollars. Amazing. A later career promo, which is pretty cool. There's some promos in here. Uh, that'll get to. This is a later career. I think this is late 80s from Yusuf Latif. This is called uh, Nocturnes. Very cool. You get the stamp there. You got the sticker printed right on the sleeve. Uh, I think this was on maybe Atlantic Records still at the time. Yeah. Big Yusef Latif guy. Um, this is not typically a record that goes for very much money, but you know what? It's a blue note technically. Obviously that 70s sort of end of career comp, the Memorial album from Lee Morgan, one of my favorite trumpet players of all time. More kind of later career stuff on the Milestones label, but this stuff is so good and typically runs cheap. So even though this was five bucks, you know, typically it might be a 10 or $12 record, whatever it is. Um, this came out in, oh, what is it? I think mid seventies here, 77. Uh, and it's Inner Voices from McCoy Tyner. Love McCoy Tyner, obviously best known, you know, obviously he was a great solo artist, but also best known as being part of the um, John Coltrane uh, quartet. Uh, piano player, amazing. This is also a, a promo here too, um, which is very cool. So pumped to have that. Uh, this was cool. Again, more I, later album. It's not like I'm finding like original blue notes in here uh, from like the 50s that are, you know, $6,000 records that I'm getting for five bucks. But um, stuff like this is always cool. This came out in 1979. So definitely a later album, but it's a promo. It's got the strip. It's got the white label. And that is always no from Thelonious Monk. Uh, very cool stuff here. Double record again, five bucks. Good to go. A, uh, great jazz guitarist. Definitely falls more into that fusion realm. Looking forward to this one. This is also another promo and this is on ECM too, 1982. Um, John Abercrombie, uh, and Ralph Tower here. Um, what is the name of this record? Don't know. Let me just check. Maybe that's just the name of it, right? Uh, five years later, Ralph Tower, uh, Ralph Towner, I'm so sorry, Ralph Towner and John Abercrombie. Cool. Anything on ECM, I'm all in on. So ECM promo rocking. Um, not familiar. I think this is more of like a swing guy. Lester Young, uh, sax player. Um, 1962. This is Prez is Blue. Uh, Prez is Blue, Lester Young. Again. Looking forward to that. Uh, this was a reissue on Argyle that was then redone for um, Cadet here. This is Sonny Stitt. Good stuff here. Sonny Stitt's great. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, more uh, awesome stuff. Uh, 1974, Sonny Rollins. We love that. The Cutting Edge. There's also a promo here. Five bucks. Uh, Django Reinhardt, awesome stuff. This is a Italian imports. This came out again in, uh, in Italy back in uh, a long time ago. Very cool CBS labels there. Um, but this is Paris 1945 from Django Reinhardt. Awesome stuff. More Sonny Rollins. This is not an original on Impulse. This came out um, kind of as part of like an MCA uh, sort of thing, but technically a promo, interestingly enough. Uh, a reissue promo. Those are fascinating. And then whatever this is, custom pressed premium version vinyl. It says audiophile, which is a big deal for the eighties. Um, but yeah, Sonny Rollins on impulse, a great record. I have no idea how this sounds. If I were to guess, it probably doesn't sound great, but again, for five bucks, we will take it. OG first press, um, on Mercury. This is Julian Cannonball Allerly with Cannonball in root. Pump for this, Nat Adderley, Sam Jones on bass, Jim Cobb on drums. Love it. How about some vibes? Good vibes only. Another promo, later career type of thing, but future uh, also features Freddie Harbury here. Here's Highway 1 from Bobby 
Hutchardson, we love the timing strip. Highway one, Bobby Hutchardson, great vibes player. Love it. More Eddie Lockjaw Davis with uh, Shirley Scott. This is Misty here. This is on Moodsville. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Can't wait for that. I do have a couple of copies of this, but I did not have an original. I love, again, I mentioned this earlier, I absolutely love the Miles Davis stuff with uh, Gil Evans. Um, and this is obviously one of the best, but this is an original uh, Porgy and Bess. For those label hoes out there on that 6i, Columbia 6i. Beautiful, beautiful Columbia 6i. Awesome. Porger, Besser. Um, I see these things around again. I, you know, these are like those later sort of releases where digital was cool, you know, now digital's not cool anymore. Um, but you know what? It's Miles Davis and it's five bucks. I think this came out in the eighties here. This is, um, yeah, Miles Davis live from more music from the legendary Carnegie Hall concert. Uh, also wildly enough, a promo. I mean, this was obviously someone's like collection of stuff. Um, a lot of promos, but yeah. Uh, how about some Coltrane, right? Uh, yeah, no original like prestige or anything like that, Coltrane stuff, but some really cool comps um, that I'm excited about. Again, for five bucks, uh, can't be it. His Greatest Years, volume three, Coltrane. Uh, here's the best of John Coltrane. This is on ABC. A um, couple years, obviously, several years after he passed. But, uh, yeah. Great ring wear. I love it. Of course, this is one of those records that you just see. It's like, this reminds me of, obviously, anything like the, with the black cover. But this reminds me of, like, Chicago Transit Authority in terms of, like, the ring wear. But, yeah, another great double record. Best of, uh, or best John Coltrane. His greatest years. Love it. Some jazz into soul, into funk, fusion, all that good stuff. One of the best to ever do it, Bobby Humphrey, Satin Doll. This has been a record that's been on my sort of radar for a long time. It's not an expensive record. Um, it is, I believe, on Blue Note, though. Yeah, of course, you know, the 70s Blue Note stuff, not really all that uh, rare or expensive, but uh, don't sleep on this type of stuff. This Satin Doll from Bobby Humphrey is fucking wild. I love this type of shit. Okay, getting away from some of the jazz here. It might be uh, a lot of rock and roll from here on out. How about the great Canadian band that I own nothing of? Moxie. This is Moxie 2. Moxie 1 looks very similar. I think it's just a black cover. But yeah, um, looking forward to this. I've never actually listened to Moxie. I've just heard that they're just a really sweet, cool Canadian hard rock band. So five bucks, looking forward to it. Yeah, it's not the debut, but it is still on Billingsgate. Steve, if you're out there watching, I know you will dig this one. This still has John Lawton on it. I'm just a rock and roll singer from Lucifer's Friend. I do still need that Lucifer's Friend debut, which I know is the best. And after that, they started changing their sound in all the different ways. But uh, yeah, I don't know, still cool on that, uh, on that classic Billingsgate label, uh, which is awesome. Uh, speaking of John Lawton, but right before John Lawton went and joined Uriah Heep, uh, it's high and mighty. Maybe not their best, <laughs> but, uh, for five bucks, I fucking love Uriah Heep. Even mediocre Uriah Heep is still pretty damn good for me. Uh, you do still have John Wetton on here, I believe. Yeah, John Wetton's on here, along with, uh, the, the rest of the gang, David Byron, Lee Kerslake, Mick Box, Ken Hensley. Uh, so the lineup's there for sure. Uh, how about a prog band from the Netherlands that is not, um, well, wait, no, maybe that was, anyway, it's Kayak. I've never listened to Kayak before. I've always wanted to get into them though. I think, yeah, prog band from the Netherlands, uh, mid seventies type of stuff. Uh, we can talk about that later for the people into that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know, boys. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, prog fans out there, if you know Kayak, let me know. Uh, these are a couple records that are getting more and more expensive all the time. And I don't really know why they are great records and I didn't have them in their holes. So I'm happy to have it, but that is Runt, the ballad of Todd Rudgren. So what, this is his second because like his first was just Runt. I forget. I believe this is his uh, second or first. I don't know. I forget. I mix them up because they're both Runt. They're both ballad of Todd Rudgren and some other stuff. Maybe his magnum opus, whatever it may be, something, anything. Now this has been a record that has blown up in price. I mean, it's like a 15 or $20 record now. So I was glad, glad to grab that for five bucks. Um, this is actually probably a $5 record and by a $5 record, it's probably like a $3 record, but, uh, I love this band. And this was the, 
record that they sort of blew up because of a mega pop song. And I just, I mean, it is just a perfect pop song from the 80s. But uh, it's Outside Inside from the Tubes. Uh, and of course, she's a beauty. She's one in a million girls. One in a million girls. You know, uh, you're welcome for that. Um, I love the Tubes, man. And this is just a cool cool record outside inside and then last but certainly not least this is probably like the find of the uh the day i guess um you know for those who know procol harem had obviously the huge hit with their debut while you're shaded pale of course while you're shaded pale is what they will say is the most played song in you know uk history if you count radio and jukebox and all that type of stuff um but was never a part of the actual lp that got released in the uk but it was part of the debut release that got released in the US, blah, blah, blah. Several years later, I think in 1973 maybe, they sort of re-released the debut um, under like a promo thing. I don't really know exactly how or why it works, but I was super pumped to have this. This is like a $20, $25 record, um, but it is Whiter Shade of Pale, promo, uh, A&M, white label, Alternate kind of cover art. Uh, it's called Whiter Shade of Pale, but it's the debut. It's the whole thing. So, um, yeah, this was awesome. Very cool to see this. I've seen it out there, but usually it's pretty expensive. So, the quick and dirty. There you go. 16 minutes. Not too bad. I appreciate you all watching. If you're familiar with any of these, um, let me know your thoughts on them, what you think. Sorry for all the people who hate jazz out there. A fat boo does what he does. All right, y'all. Take care. Be good. We'll see you on the next one. And, uh... So long, sucker.